praise God for his faithfulness and his goodness. I know and I believe that uh, the past three weeks has been a blessing to you. The value of investment, the value of investment. Uh, we've looked at kingdom investment, self-development investment. We've looked about family investment. And today we are looking at people's investment. Uh, there's a passage in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Hallelujah. So Paul was telling Timothy that the things that have impacted him, no, you see, he used the word son. It wasn't his biological son, but it was his godly son. He built and he mentored him. He grew him to the point that now he said that with all that you've had, all that have impacted into your life, I want you also to commit the same thing and use the word to faithful men. It means that you have to build people to be faithful that they will also continue the good way. Let me conclude by saying that one of the greatest investments you can make now that you are alive is to invest in people, not just material things. The previous we've spoken about things we need to. So I'm not saying that investing into material things is wrong. I'm using the word not just material things. It means that invest into material things, invest into people also. Because false balancing is an abomination unto the Lord. This is very, very crucial. We want to look at 10 perfect examples and please I'm not going to read the Bible passages I'm going to give you uh, the, the, the 10 persons 10 perfect example 10 persons that we can really use as a reference point but I will let you know the Bible passage where you can read to find those things so let's run through right now number one Abraham invested in Eliezer of Damascus whom he sent to marry for his son Isaac. Hallelujah. So Abraham invested into this man called Eliezer. When you read in Genesis chapter 15, you find this young man when God told Abraham that look into the sky, I'm going to do, I'm going to bless you, and say, Well, you have not given me a child. Is it this my steward? Steward means the manager, a caretaker. Is it the one that you want to? You want, you, want to, you want to use as my seed. And God said, no, 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 no. The seed that I'm talking about shall come out of that noise. So this Eliezer had been with Abraham long, 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 long ago. Even to the point when Abraham was about to die. And he saw Isaac, his son. Because Eliezer had been with Abraham long ago. Before, so remember, Long, I'm using the word long ago. Abraham, it took Abraham 25 good years before he gave birth to Isaac. As at the time Isaac was going to marry, Isaac was over 30 years. So this young man had been with Abraham over 50 years, if, if I may, if you do the calculation. And so he has been, he has invested. And so when Abraham was looking for a wife, he knew this young man and he sent him. When you read the entire chapter of Genesis 24, I want everybody to read it. How they made a vow and how this young man prayed a prayer that God responded to him. Whom are you investing into? If you are not dead today, sometimes we take pride eh, because I'm not dead. Nothing is working. You are a failure. You are a failure. Whether you are there or you are not there, you must have people who can stand in your praise. Number two, Fellows Delta invested in Moses for him to become one of the greatest leaders 
of his time. In Exodus chapter 2, in reference to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. Exodus chapter 2, in reference to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. You realize that we know the story, how Pharaoh at that time, because of he was insecurity, wanted to kill most of the, the male children of, 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 the, of the Israelites. And, and, and the mother put the boy in the river now. And, and this, this young lady picked this child. Made his mother to, in the God's own divine way. But what I'm saying, the Bible said that Moses knew the laws and everything. Pharaoh's daughter invested into Moses to know the administrative ethics, the ethics of leadership. And so Abraham becoming a leader started from somewhere. Somebody invested into his life. Whom are you investing into? It shouldn't be only your children, but the people around you. Moses invested in Joshua, and after his death, God has no other choice but to allow Joshua to take the praise of Moses. Joshua chapter 1, the Lord told, he said, Now my servant Moses is there. Arise and take his place. For as I was with him, so shall I be with you. So Joshua, when you read a lot about Joshua, the Bible used the word he was a minister. Means that a servant to Moses. He served Moses. Moses imparted a lot into his life. He and Joshua and Caleb were the only people that moved from the land of Egypt, find themselves in the promised land. Whom are you investing in? Let us invest into people. Number four, Elijah invested in Elisha to take over from him as a prophet. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 16. We saw how Elijah imparted the move from one place to another, from Gilgal to Bethel to Jericho to Jordan. And he asked him, what do you want from me? He said, I need a double portion of your spirit. And he received. When you read the Bible carefully, Elisha performed eight miracles. And Elisha performed 15 and he died. And after his death, some people were going to bury somebody. And they saw their enemies coming and they threw away the dead body. And the Bible said the dead body fell on the bones of Elisha. And that dead body came back alive making 16. Ah, praise God, praise God, praise God. We pray that God will begin to invest into people all over around us. Let me continue to say, not only your family members, not only your children. Number five, early invested in Samuel, who became the greatest prophet in Israel. First King chapter 2. God even has to use the voice of Eli to call somewhere. And so three times, the third one, Eli said, when he called again, said, speak thy servant heareth. He groomed the young man. He built him up to know the administrative ethics of the priesthood. So Samuel became one person who seems to hold the office close to Jesus Christ. We know Jesus was a king, but let's put his kingship aside. Jesus was a prophet, Jesus was a priest, Jesus was a judge. The only prophet who had this three great office was Samuel. Number six, Mordecai invested in Esther, who became a queen, to save her people from the hands of Haman. You read Esther chapter 2 up to chapter 10. We saw how Esther became so a prominent queen. Because Mordecai invested a lot into this young lady and she became a queen and she was so wonderful. Let us, let us do our best to invest in people. If you are no more today, who can boast of you? Who can say that indeed you, this man, made me who I am today? Number seven, Naomi invested in Ruth, who became part of 
the genealogy of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter, in Esther, when you read uh, Ruth chapter 1 up to chapter 4, you find everything about these two women. And then Matthew chapter 1, the verse 5, when you read the genealogy, this woman called Ruth, her name was found there. There were only two women that their name were found. That's Rahab and Ruth. Number eight, Barnabas invested in Paul, who became one of the greatest apostles in his days. As chapter 9, verse 27, as chapter 11, verse 20 to 30, and as chapter 13, you could see the investment that Barnabas, he wasn't a deacon, he wasn't one of the apostles, he wasn't a pastor, he was just a disciple. And yet he committed himself, investing into Paul's life. And Paul became a great apostle. Even up to date, he wrote most of the epistles than those that Jesus handpicked. Number nine, Paul invested in Timothy, who became a great preacher in his days. First Timothy chapter one, the entire chapter one speaks about it. The investment Paul made in the life of this young man called Timothy. So I'm giving you all these examples so that one way or the other we look for somebody to invest ourselves into that to be a blessing to us. Our Lord, number 10, our Lord Jesus Christ invested in the 12 apostles who continue his work with power. In Mark chapter 3, the verse 13 to 19 and Acts chapter 4 the verse 13 let me paraphrase a bit in Mark 3 13 the Bible said he called the 12 to be with him he called them to be with him he imparted into their life and when you read Acts chapter 4 verse 13 the Bible said that when the elders saw the boldness of Paul and uh, Peter and John they took knowledge of them that they have been with Christ let me conclude by saying that Always remember that your success is never complete until you have a successor. Whom are you investing yourself in? Whom are you grooming? Who have you imparted? It can be words of encouragement. It can just be seeking for the person's welfare. It can be one child close to you. It may not be your child. And asking the child, how is school? Are you learning? Do your best. Once in a while, tell the child, if you're able to get to which position do you find yourself? They said, well, we are 20 in class, but I'm somewhere 12. So, okay, if you do your best and you get to 10, I will give you this award. And the child will fall. When the child get that position 10, you do something. Say, look, next time if you're able to, look, it's all part of the investment. So investment is not only money. It can be encouragement. It can be motivation. It can be prayers. It can be taking people as your own. This is what we can do and to bring blessings into the name of the Lord. I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will guide us through his word. May we share a word of prayer. If you're here, you don't know the Lord as your personal savior, I want you to share this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing me. I bless your name, O God, that your word has become more impactful into my life. Let your word have a cause in my life. In Jesus' name. I pray with thank you. May I pray with you. Father, we pray, we thank you. We honor you for your faithfulness and your goodness. Guide us through your word. Sustain us. And may your word have a cause in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is Samuel Obese. I want to encourage you. I want to bless God for your life. I want you to subscribe. I want you to share. I want you to tag the bell. We also want you to want to say that all our partners say, God bless you for all that you are doing. The Momonoma is down there. And you are at liberty to be part of it. May God bless you and keep you and I know that the Lord who has started a good work with you will surely end up with you. Next month we will continue with another series. I'm saying that you are blessed beyond case. Amen.